thrilled to be here recording another We Seek Wisdom podcast, and we are in a slightly different location in the house. You might hear a little more of the room sound because we're in the, the front room here at Dr. Garlock's house, and we are thrilled to have a special guest on the podcast today. His daughter, you might have heard of her, her name is Shelley Hamilton, and we are looking at Born to Die today. So, Dr. Garlock, take it away. And let me add to that, Tim, mm -hmm. that Ron Hamilton himself is in the next room from mm -hmm. where we mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. And so we're all gathered together here. Mm -hmm. So if you hear extra noises here, <laughs> that's because Ron is in the very next room in that hospice bed that we have for him. Yeah, he's bed bound, and, being, and so he can't, taken care of. he can't join us, and, unfortunately. <laughs> and, yes, and so it's just very fortunate that, and we're going to be talking about the first Christmas carol, Born to Die, was written when Ron Hamilton was just 29 years old. In fact, it was not just his first Christmas carol. It was just one song in his first Christmas musical, Born to Die, as the musical contains Christmas carols that reveal both Ron and Shelley's abilities to write music. Ron's musical writing skills expound sound of biblical content in the lyrics and memorable melodies that succinctly paint and color those lyrics. Shelley's arranging the melodies help paint the mood and lyrics, and we'll be talking to Shelley today about how she did that. Ron lost his left eye in May 1978, three years after he and Shelley were married. The following fall, they were planning to minister in churches with me, traveling in the airplane I was flying at that time. Evidently, Ron's mind began working on the journey he wanted his first Christmas musical to take. The lyrics for the songs, plus the music and drama Ron was formulating in his mind, was purposed to share the gospel on a down-to-earth level. Ron's ideas for incorporating the true-to-the-life story throughout the music was different than most Christmas musicals, cantatas, or oratorios that had been written before. Praise God, the story musical idea became very effective in bringing people into God's kingdom. Amen. After Ron and I traveled with Dad in his plane those first four months, our son and first child Jonathan was born on January 18th, 1979. It was going to be difficult to travel in a plane with an infant baby. So our dear friend Carl Blythe loaned us his beautiful travel lodge to take our young family in across the country. By the way, I think we need to mention, Shelley, that Carl Blythe was just a good friend of ours yes. who helped us in many ways. And uh, we're just so glad that but God brought his our life into his life to help him. That and All to those things us. are very yeah. interesting, so yes. keep on going. Sorry about that. No problem. During down times while traveling, Ron and I worked on writing the Born to Die musical. Ron had a synthesizer put in the back of the RV so I could work on arranging the music. All our music over the years has been created by Ron writing down the melody on a piece of music staff paper and the lyrics on a yellow pad. I would then input the melody on the computer and add chords, vocal parts, a piano accompaniment, and decide keys sometimes tweaking the melody to fit better with the chords and lyrics, all with Ron's approval, of course. Of course, now you're, <laughs> you're telling things that most people don't even know, Shelley. Oh. That's why I wanted us to get together today. And this is exciting, to be able to talk mm -hmm. about this and get a different viewpoint of what people mm -hmm. know and don't know. So keep on going with that. Next, I would either orchestrate the piano part myself or give it to one of our orchestrators. And then I would contact the orchestra members and singers, produce the recording sessions, then mix the orchestra and vocal parts with the audio engineer to blend them well together. Then take the music I had input on the computer, edit it and get it formatted for print. The finished recording would then go to the duplicator and the computer input music to the printer. Even the title, Born to Die, Ron chose for this first Christmas musical, shows the different approach Ron desired to employ. Born to Die is an adumbration. That's a short statement with profound meaning. We, I like that. Most people don't know that term, but we like to use it, adumbration. Yes. <laughs> uh, in the beginning, God. That's an adumbration. God, God just doesn't try to explain himself. Mm -hmm. Just use an adumbration. Uh, John 1, in the beginning was the Word. That's another adumbration. That's a mm -hmm. short statement with profound meaning. 
It consists of just three words that unite Christ's birth and death together. Isn't that an interesting concept? Yes. The title song has uh, this concept in the first stanza that merges the two ideas. On the night Christ was born just before break of morn, as the stars in the sky were fading, or the place where he lay for the shadow cold and gray of a cross that would humble a king. Thus, in one page that Ron covered what Handel approached after a hundred pages of the Messiah, <laughs> took him to handle that long, Ron got it in right away. <laughs> On page 101, Handel writes, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. This phrase led into the cross that was to come. The first three stanzas of Ron's Born to Die dwell on what Christ had to do to redeem mankind. The fourth stanza challenged us to accept what Christ has done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I distinctly remember our first performance of Born to Die. We accomplished the premiere with the Wilds Camp staff and counselors in the Royer Conference Center at the Wilds. We performed it on August 2nd, 1980. And the reason I remember that is because it was exactly one week after Ron's and my daughter Tara was born. I told Ron I didn't know if I could make it playing the piano through the entire cantata. He said, typically as a man might think, oh, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, to that show. We were, uh, you must not have been in the car when we were going to Myrtle Beach with, uh, I think, with Gina and... Um, yeah, she was born there, right? Yeah. And uh, Randy. Uh -huh. And we were in the car listening to the first recording we had of Born to Die. Uh -huh. And all of us were crying. Oh. <laughs> and saying, aren't we having a wonderful time? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that also reminds me of is that when we performed Born to Die, the next Christmas, in, well, that Christmas in 1979, you didn't, the choir members, which were about 150, yes. had not heard the story yet right. until the night. We put it all together the night of the performance, and some of the choir members couldn't even sing. They were crying so hard at the story yeah. <laughs> that was so Especially heart Especially at the end, where we went to the last song, I'm Going Home, yes. and nobody could sing. <laughs> <laughs> the whole choir was crying. Yes, yeah, so you said, we'll never do that again. We'll have them hear the story before the performance <laughs> to get okay. through it. Um, the musical from beginning to end lasted one hour and 20 minutes. One hour and 20 minutes of long endurance, sitting on a hard piano bench and playing full accompaniments for each choral piece. I did fine until the end of the last song. I started shaking severely and was grateful the end was in sight. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad to see you're still with us, Shelley. <laughs> in this blog, we would like to analyze Ron's first Christmas songs using what we call phonohymnology. And Tim, why don't you go ahead and explain to us what phonohymnology, where that idea came from. Well, it, it's something you came up with, and it's the idea of phonics as applied in the realm of musicology, where we take the small bits of music that mm -hmm. reinforce and enhance the meaning of the lyric. And mm -hmm. there, there's a whole series of special things that you've come up with, certain intervals and certain chords, stuff like that, which we, especially you, as you've dug in, are seeing over and over in the literature in music that enhance and, and mean certain things to support the lyrics. And what do we call those special things? Do you remember? The patterns. The term? Yeah. The, the, um, the archetypes. Archetypes, <laughs> archetypes is the term that you've used to, right. to describe that. And uh, featured in your hopefully soon upcoming book of Simply Garlock as you've gone through yours right. and Flora Jean's music. But we're also very honored to look at Ron's uh, Born to Die. All of your one. listeners know about Felix Shelley, what that is. Do you think, or just I would guess so. Yeah. Phonics are, are a, something a, a, in apple. language, mm -hmm. and we'll be talking about this later, probably even in this uh, particular blog today, mm -hmm. that that happens in art yep. and in other areas as well. Yeah. Just the phonics where you take it apart and mm -hmm. decide how it works, and that's, that's what we do with the music here. Well, we have, we were going to take the oh, first yeah. eight notes of the song Born to Die. Yep. Ron chose to paint the birth of Christ by using only one chord suspended over a bass pedal tone, like, um, oh, yeah, sure. 
Then he changes the bass note. No, right. elongates it with a yes to kind of color the word fainting that's what, we, that's what we're talking fainting. about a lot of <laughs> folks okay. aren't even aware of this Shelley and mm-hmm. so we want them to become aware so we can use this as an educational thing too because music is a language mm-hmm. we've got a book here called The Joy of Music by a man uh, called John Mosseri, I guess is the way you say his name, who conducted all the major orchestras of the world. And he's written a book on how music conveys things by itself. It is language. If you can use phonics to understand the language of words, there must be phonics to understand the language of music. Right. Phonohymnology is a term Tim Willing and I am and I have created to describe the analyzation of phonics in hymns. We've done this by considering, evaluating, and interpreting the musical patterns great hymn writers have used to paint their lyrics. By the way, going back to the great composers of the past, start with Bach, go to uh, Felix Mendelssohn, go to uh, Haydn. They all did this. How musical phonics develop into patterns which are called archetypes. Ron didn't know the term phonohymnology or what he described. <laughs> However, he innately encoded patterns in his music or archetypes that portray the lyrics he wrote. Uh-huh. The first eight notes that Shelley just played of Born to Die, Ron paints the birth of Christ by using only one chord suspended over a bass pedal note. You play that for us, Shelley. Mm-hmm. He then uses a 1 7 flat 7. Can you play that sound? Mm-hmm. See, that's a tonic chord that has a seventh in it. That's a, that is a, an archetype. It comes, if you go, for instance, to Handel. When he gets to the end of one of his choruses, he throws that in. A one seven flat seven. That's the tonic chord with a seventh on it. It's mm-hmm. a major minor seventh chord. Yeah, I think it's coming up next. Yeah, there's that major there minor. That's something special. <laughs> Always and, leads to the four chord. Yes, mm-hmm. well... Yep. Well, not always, probably, most of the time. time. Most of the time, So he emphasizes the parallelism while taking place as the stars are fading. Now, do we need to talk about... Yeah, Christ's birth with the stars are fading, that parallelism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about parallelism, can we explain that, Tim, or do we Sure. Uh, It's Hebrew parallelism, as many times how it's referred to, because it's used quite a bit in the Hebrew uh, language, and... You, you see it many places in the Bible where this thing is connected to that thing and either they're equal or they're different, but it's kind of that question answer type, uh, that connection back and forth between two things here on the night Christ was born just before break of morn, how yeah. those two are connected and they rhyme, which is also nice. <laughs> uh, but that connection in, in the lyric is portrayed also in the music. That's right. And, and by the way, all good hymns have that. Mm-hmm. All good, good hymns, carol, all of good mm-hmm. carols have that. And Ron was doing it automatically uh, as you were helping Shelley. Mm-hmm. Okay. He uses the same chordal pattern again in measures 9 through 12 of this right, one. Right, or the place where he lay yeah. fell a shadow cold and then he uses that yeah. on gray it's, so that's uh, not that's a minor, like it's, it's, it's a continuation of the thought mm-hmm. and clarifying it lots of times but we're painting the word gray yeah, yeah mm-hmm. exactly that it's not minor but it sounds like it's diminished isn't that diminished interesting diminished seventh mm-hmm. and that's that diminished and level. then back yep and that chord just sounds gray yeah. Of course, the lyric <laughs> yeah. informs so we, we it, but it's such a beautiful choice. people to be aware that when they, yes. when they play this or sing it, they realize what is happening. And as you sing in a choir, maybe you're singing a tenor or an alto, mm-hmm. that you're a part of that word painting so that when you sing it, uh, I've got a book called Musical Communication, and there's a whole chapter, chapter 11 of that book. It's 500-some pages long. But they say that when you sing, you should communicate the message, paint the words, don't don't just ignore it. So that 
Ron's painting the humility that had to be endured by the king being born in a manger. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then the chorus, we get to the choruses, and it, the chorus changes the mood. It, yeah. it goes, um, da, 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 da. then it goes up an octave above, yeah. doo, 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 where the stanza starts. It's kind of um, painting the cold and gray lower, but then the, um, the theme of the song, Born to Die, starts the melody starts an octave up which is a brighter sound yes and that's an archetype shall we when you get an uh, when you get an octave eight notes one two three four five six seven eight mm-hmm. eight is always even and everything it's a new beginning we are yes. a week has seven days mm-hmm. eight's a new beginning and, and it's uh, a bright it's a bright it sound. makes a brighter thing mm-hmm. yes and, and higher and uh, one, so ron did that automatically with you helping him well I don't Go know. Ahead. but the born to die then he on die he uses the augmented sound yeah and that also points up and paints the word die and that's another archetype see it points up what's coming uh-huh. it says come listen up that augmented sound where you have two major thirds. Mm-hmm. See, usually a triad has a major third and a minor third. C E G, play that, Shelley. C E G. C-E-G. Yeah, see, that's that's a major third. It has a major third, minor. Third. Now put it with G sharp. See, that's an augmented. It's two major thirds. Yeah. And that always points to what's yeah. coming next. It, it says to your mind, even though you're not aware. It gives listen. it direction and it's motion. So, it's going somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead. And then Jesus suffered my sin to forgive. It's sin to forgive. That's a, a wonderful thought of this song. Yeah. He was born mm-hmm. to die to forgive our sins. Yeah. And he changes the um, chord to major. It would should have been, but or, but he he makes it major, and it's a brighter sound. Yes. He's gonna forgive our sin. Yes. Oh. Um, and then born to die on Calvary. Calvary, he goes up there. Born to die upon Calvary. <laughs> Pointing up Calvary, he was wounded. That I yeah. <laughs> might live. And I think we need to emphasize here, Shelley, Ron was only 29 mm-hmm. and you were only 25 years 26, old. 26, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's special. Mm-hmm. That, that, that you folks had that insight. God, mm-hmm. that had to be God. I like things that we know are God given. Mm-hmm. And God was giving you an ability. And because we, we need to talk about this too, well, you've I heard guess about, you're going to mention um, it. Why don't, you, why don't you mention your next thing about how many people got saved that we knew about? See, oh yes, yes. Um, uh-huh. We were all thrilled at Majesty after a lot of churches put on the Born to Die musical because we received over 300 letters telling us about all the people that were saved as right after they performed uh-huh. that musical at their church. And that just made it all worthwhile to Ron and I, Ron and me, right? Yeah, to Ron right. and me. <laughs> and it was just like Ron and and I said, this is what we're going to do with our cantatas. We're always going to do a story and share the gospel in it so people would know exactly how they could receive Christ. And a lot of people, which there's nothing wrong with, take um, just different songs from different um, octavos or musicals and take them out and then put scripture between them. Um, this is very commonly done and it's a very good thing. Um, but we found that by using a story that had humor in it and um, the gospel mm-hmm. <laughs> that many people came to Christ because they would come to a Christmas musical where they wouldn't come to church any other time of the year and including the gospel so strongly in uh, a story um, anyway it just intertwined with all the music about Christ and his birth and then his death um, really uh, pulled together the gospel in people's minds. And in my experience, Shelley, that's the first time I knew I've done the Messiah. 
mm-hmm. over and over again. And it's beautiful. I've done the creation. I've done Felix Mendelssohn's Elijah. I've done Brahms. I mean, I've done these composers, but I've never had people get saved, even after your Messiah. Mm-hmm. The gospel's there, but they don't, don't have, they don't trust. But here, where people are getting saved, and we heard about it, and mm-hmm. to me, that's the most exciting thing that God allowed us to have a part in doing that. See, I believe "Born to Die" is quintessential music. And that's I mean, it's very special that Ron and Shelley Hamilton initiated as one aspect of the multifaceted ministry God was giving them for the future that we look back on now and thank God for. Thank you so much. Been a great episode. And I can testify as well. The very first church and Christian school that I was serving at there in West Mm -hmm. Columbia, South Carolina, this was the Christmas cantata we did that year. And it was so powerful that we didn't want to only do it in the church. We took it over to Fort Jackson, an enormous fort on the other side of our town and filled an auditorium with uh, folks from the army there. And it was had such an impact. Wow. I, I forget yeah. how many folks it, it impacted there because it was such a long time ago. But I very Just... much remember how powerfully uh, it was used by our choir there. So it's exciting to get to peek behind the curtain a little bit, find yeah. out about the history <laughs> and talk about a little bit of the technical aspect there in the music mm-hmm. and, and hear it beautifully played. That's something we don't have uh, oh. on the podcast as we're <laughs> talking about it. So that's quite an enhancement. Yeah. But we you, three uh-huh. here, let <laughs> me interrupt here and just say, Absolutely. we're so excited that we can share this with Shelley's Facebook people and mm-hmm. our uh, we seek wisdom people on as the well. blog, yeah. And anybody else that you want to put, tell them they can get on it. Yeah, absolutely. There's a way of getting on it because yeah. <clears throat> this is exciting for us to be able to use this for the glory of God. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we welcome anyone who's found us from Shelley's Facebook mm-hmm. page, and we're so glad to have you here. If you found this helpful, please click that subscribe button down below. That's a tremendous help to us. And if uh, you liked it, hit that thumbs up. And we thank you so much for listening and and trust this has been a help and encouragement to you. And we look forward to seeing you next time.